Cleopas and his walking companion, who probably was his wife, let's face it, had been among the disciples. They had been part of the Jesus movement, believers in Jesus as Messiah. But like many other of Jesus' followers, once they saw him arrested and beaten and crucified, they felt defeated and scared. They probably stayed locked away with the other disciples after crucifixion who had fled and were hiding still from the authorities. But that morning, when the women had come back with stories of visions and angels and resurrection, even though it sounded ridiculous, they checked out the tomb for themselves. But by then, all that they saw was that the tomb was empty and Jesus' body was missing. That didn't account for anything. And I guess it all just became too much. It's fake news, Cleo, says his wife. Let's go home. You know, it's seven miles or about three and a half hours walking distance from Jerusalem to Emmaus. I know this much about a couple in conversation for three hours or more. You can only talk about something for so long, amen? No matter how big the issue. There are things happening on the road that get your attention, thankfully. Nature and plants and trees are blooming and birds are flying and clouds are forming and patterns and pictures and you notice these things on a long walk. There's life along the road, villages you might pass through or shops or houses, smells of food being cooked, kids outside playing, the sound of laughter or arguing or babies crying. There are other people on the road, some passing and waving. Hey, not so close without a mask. Point being, there are other things going on in life besides the big news of the day. There's grocery shopping and movie night and dogs that need to go out and interruptions. Situations that get our attention or our intention or honestly things that are just plain funny. It doesn't lessen the severity of the crisis, but still, life in full color doesn't stop happening just because we're in the middle of a crisis. So when the resurrected Jesus interrupts them on the road, they are so deep in conversation. Maybe they're talking about the events of the weekend or Maybe, honestly, they're looking for somebody who sells coffee, toffee, crunch ice cream for Cleo's late night binge, that they don't recognize Jesus. Actually, it says their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Whatever they were talking about had their sole focus, and they were blind to the fact that Jesus stood before them. When he asks them what they're talking about, they stop. And they don't say anything. In fact, Luke takes a whole verse to tell us they didn't say anything. How long do you think was that pause? How long did it take them to shift from whatever they were talking about right back into the shock and grief and anger? It takes a minute. But moving from whatever space of life we happen to be in, in the moment, back to the crisis of the pandemic or whatever it is we're going through, the interruption suddenly becomes an upheaval. And what started small all of a sudden takes on something of its own. And the pain washes over us anew. We feel it rise up into the back of our throat. And we can feel the sting of tears as they well up. And yeah, can't talk about it. But Jesus is so very gentle. He says nothing. He doesn't remind or rush or push. He just walks with them. If there is a more compassionate way to minister to someone, I do not know it. Cleopas breaks the silence finally with sarcasm. What have you been living under a rock? How can you not know what's been going on? Tell me everything, says Jesus. 
tell me everything. My friend Pete used to say, a true friend already knows the ending, but still sticks around for the show. It's so true. Such a small thing to offer the grace of listening, to hear the whole story from that person's perspective, to endure the play-by-play or the one-sidedness of it all. It's a gift Jesus offers to each of us. And actually, if we look at the words of Cleopas as a prayer, which they are, right? Isn't any time we speak to Jesus is a prayer. So if we frame those words of Cleopas as a prayer, they quickly become our own prayer. Whether for quarantine, pandemic, or any time of crisis or loss, they sound something like this. What happened? I'll tell you what happened. It all came crashing down. That's what happened. Everything was supposed to be different. I had hope. I had faith that things were going to be better. But then this happened. And then that happened. And then I got scared. And then not for nothing, where was God? I'm so disillusioned and disappointed. Yes. And besides all this, it's been three days. And moreover, even though people are saying that there's hope, well, I didn't see it, so I can't believe it. And and you know what? I'm duped. I feel angry and hurt. And and most of all, I, I just feel alone. Only then does Jesus speak. And he tells them the truth. Tells them the truth of what happened and why it had to happen that way, and where God was, and where God is, even in our darkest hour. And their hearts burned within them as he was speaking. If our story ended there, it would be enough. Because often, this is exactly how we experience the risen Christ. When we're in the midst of suffering, someone maybe someone we know or maybe someone we don't, comes alongside us and brings that gift of hearing us or of a scripture or a prayer or the right words or even no words at all. And we feel something. It resonates within us. We feel ourselves respond to the compassion from inside. The thirsty spirit within us feels quenched by the love of God being poured over us. And sometimes we recognize this as a Jesus encounter, and sometimes we don't. I don't think that matters so much. Look what happened in the story. When they came to the end of the road, at the end of the journey, and Cleopas and his wife are ready to make the turn toward their house, what does Jesus do? He keeps walking, as if he's just going to keep going. He didn't worry about whether or not they would thank him, whether or not they knew it was who they had just spent time with. Actually, Jesus never even told them his name. What he did do is step into their suffering as quiet as a whisper, and he ministered to them with the compassion and love of God showing first. And that was enough. Whether we recognize it or not, Christ ministers to us in that same way. Whether we give thanks or ask forgiveness or repent or change or ever give God a second thought, Jesus ministers to us. We are pursued and cared for and soothed by the spirit of the living God, whether we recognize it or not. Recognition, my friends, and the benefit of recognition is for us. It helps us us so that when we're suffering we know who to turn to when we need help we know from whom our help comes recognition means that we get the benefit of returning to christ all the time 
It means surety of faith. It means relationship with the divine. It means growth and life and healing and reconciliation for all of us. Recognition of the Christ means that we begin to see the Christ in ourselves, that living, breathing spirit that encourages and nurtures us as we grow into everything God is designed to be that we are made in the image of God, that we are raised with Christ. It means that we can see God's spirit in others, in the strong and the powerful, yes, but also in the least of these. It means that our eyes are open to life-giving, life-affirming power that is beyond anything we can ask or think. But one more quick thought before I go. Did you notice that the moment that Cleopas, the very moment that Cleopas and the others finally did recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread, Jesus vanishes from their sight. Now, they could have shrugged it off like we do sometimes, excused it away. Not a real encounter, not not really Jesus. Instead, they allowed their eyes to remain open to the truth. The truth that the risen Christ abides here with us, in us, and invites us to embrace God in ourselves and in one another. If you can do one thing this week, and actually not just this week, but from now on, in the midst of life in full color, Welcome the interruptions. Welcome the interruptions and even the upheaval that comes from the interruptions. Because it might just be Jesus leading you home. May God bless you this morning.